Have you been comforted from the Greek and the Hebrew scriptures? A lot of people seem to have a lot of respect for the original languages, um, but they don't really respect the translations that much. And um, I can tell you uh, from being saved for a very long time now and preaching the word full time since 2007, uh, I haven't found much comfort in the Greek and the Hebrew. Um, this is the Textus Receptus on this side and then the Masoretic Hebrew on that side. And you know, I, I go through this stuff and, and I look at this and uh, I might be able to understand a word or two in there, but uh, I don't find a whole lot of comfort in there. I don't wake up in the morning and think about different verses in Greek and then you go back here to the, to the Hebrew Old Testament and try to read that. Uh, it's kind of a weird system that people come up with that uh, they'll find comfort in that. They'll say that that's the final authority, but then they reject the King James Bible. And they'll put it down with their comments and, well, it should be better translated than this and that, whatever. <laughs> kind of weird. But the Bible says here, the King James Bible, my little pocket Bible, Romans chapter 15, verse 4, For whatsoever things were written aforetime, written aforetime, uh, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. You know, Christians had to suffer a lot. They had to go through a lot of patience so that we could one day have the hope of having the Word of God in our own language. And uh, the greatest Bible that ever existed on this earth, uh, the most printed, the most lives changed, is this one that I'm holding in my hand, not that one down there. Praise Lord for the Greek and the Hebrew Scriptures. Absolutely, not against them. But the comfort comes in here. Um, if you can read or understand Greek and Hebrew, well, good for you. But most people can't. So I can preach and teach from this book. And I can say that this is God's book. And it is. Um, and one of the reasons I can say that is because uh, I've proved it down through the years. And I've seen it proved in the lives of my viewers. I've seen that fellowship of the Spirit that we have. When the Lord reveals something to me... And he also reveals it to some of my viewers. And I've seen people that, um, not highly educated scholars or anything else, and they come out and they say, hey, brother, what do you think about this passage here, this, you know, interpretation? And will this be the correct way of, of uh, looking at this? Do you think it means this? Do you think it means that? I never thought of it that way before. Wow, that's really neat. We have fellowship of the Spirit that comes not from this here directly it comes indirectly because the king james bible is, tr is this translated into english but i just want to make it very plain to you that you don't have to feel bad if you are holding up the king james bible you don't have to do that you can have the authority of the scriptures in your tongue in your language um and people come out and they say well so then you believe that the King James Bible is the only English translation. Um, no, there were some ones before it that were from this line of manuscripts over here. Uh, the Tyndale, um, and you go up through the, you know, Coverdale and, and the Bishop's Bible and the Great Bible. and the, I'm getting them, my sequence of those things a little bit mess, messed up here. But, uh, you know, the uh, Geneva Bible... There were some good Bibles that came before the King James Bible. And you could be saved and things out of those Bibles. But the perfection came with the King James Bible. And the King James Bible has led to spiritual movements that this never produced. Ever. I mean, oh, well, what about the day of Pentecost, Brother Brian? What about that? You know, 3,000 people got saved in Acts chapter 2. Well, I'd like to point out the obvious fact that they didn't have the whole scriptures back then. The whole New Testament wasn't even written yet. So, kind of hard to make an argument that that was somehow superior to the King James Bible, but um, the greatest English translation ever. But uh, 
the other point there is that uh, 3,000 people getting saved in a day, um, well, you had some of the great evangelistic meetings under men like um, D.L. Moody and some of the other guys like that, J. Wilbur Chapman and some of the great evangelists of the 1800s, and, and um, you were having 3,000 people getting saved at every meeting. <laughs> and, um, and huge changes. Um, changes to the political spectrum and things and and um, a lot of people that were uh, I mean just revivals and and people getting away from alcohol and and uh, big, huge big changes study it I can't get into all of it I'm trying to just uh, you know this isn't uh, scripted or anything I just say as I remember things um, you didn't see that with this there was persecution. They were hunted down and things, and and you know, praise God for the martyrs, uh, the early Christians. They went through some pretty horrible stuff. Um, but the power comes from the King James Bible, and that is a scientifically proven fact. If you want to disagree with it, well, you can disagree with it all you want to, but you're not right. Um, and what's the whole point? The whole point, brethren is that you can either go and use a bunch of languages that are basically dead. There's very few people that speak Hebrew or the ancient Koine Greek. Or you can go with the King James Bible. That's been proven over and over again. You say, well, we have newer Bible versions that are based on older and better manuscripts. No, you don't. Um, what you have is uh, newer versions that are based on marketing. Um, Sinaiticus that uh, codex that one of the two, you know, what they call oldest and best manuscripts, it was a 19th century forgery made by a Greek Orthodox priest named Constantine Simonides, and that's all that it is. It's not an older, better manuscript. It's not from the 4th century. Uh, Vaticanus was around in Erasmus's day. Erasmus was the one who made the first Greek-Latin text, which later became the Textus Receptus, and Erasmus said that he knew about Vaticanus, and he said it was corrupt. So I'm not using it. Hmm. So the two oldest and best manuscripts are not the oldest, and they're certainly not the best. And um, the other thing is, if you study the issue, you'll see that a lot of these uh, better readings that they have in the new versions actually existed in the Dewey Reams translation, which came out, ironically, in 1610, one year before the King James Bible. Um, and the real issue here is... Do you have faith in the book that you hold in your hands? See, that's the thing that I've said that I've challenged people over the years with, and they can't answer it. You get the James Whites and things like this. He did a video years ago attacking me, and, um, and I offered a challenge. I said, hold up the book. Hold up God's perfect word that shouldn't be changed or corrected or whatever else. Hold it up. He didn't do it. You know why? Because no such book exists in his world. In his mindset, there is no such book that exists on this earth that's the perfect written word of God that doesn't need to be changed or updated. Now, I guess I'm a little bit of a dumb hillbilly because I just hold to this King James Bible. And when I actually, when I say that this is God's word and that you can be comforted from this book, I actually believe it. Isn't that weird? <laughs> I actually believe that I have a supernaturally inspired book that I can hold in my hands that was given through many years of patience Christians wanting to be able to carry around the Bible the Word of God in their hands this didn't exist in the first century that's why this is superior to what they had in the first century and I don't have to be ashamed at all to say that I've been preaching that for many years now and it's the truth so if you want to learn more about the Bible virgin issue if you really want to make sure that you have the right Bible then I suggest you watch a bunch of my videos Watch some other men that defend the King James Bible. If you have somebody that uh, comes along and they say, well, no translation's inspired and, and uh, all translations have errors and there are thousands of errors in this and thousands of errors in that. Okay, then what's the final authority? You? I'd rather not. I'd rather not have a man as my final authority. So um, if that's the way you want to live, well, help yourself, whatever. But uh, I'm going to stick with what uh, Christians for the last 400 plus years have stuck with, the greatest translation ever. 
Uh, what did they have before that? Oh, well, uh, not very much. Christians were persecuted for many centuries. Christians had to suffer terribly. Um, a lot of them in very much in ignorance, believing only the basic things, and they would have given anything to have what we have today available to us in the King James Bible. Um, I'm not going to the Vatican versions, the ones that were produced in conjunction with the Roman Catholic Church, the one, the same church that persecuted Christians for having the Word of God. Um, you can keep those Bibles. And um, if we have any hope at all of getting anything back here in America, um, then we need to go back to the King James Bible because that's what this nation was truly founded upon, not from the founding fathers, but from the people that lived here. Uh, what made America great was the King James Bible. It was not uh, the Constitution or things like that, or the banking system that helped people to borrow money and get build up all kinds of things with debt. That's not what made America great. That's not what has given us our freedom and our liberty. Freedom and liberty comes from the word of God and freedom of speech. So please study the issue. It's a very important one. And uh, the church buildings, they will lie right to your face about the whole issue because the uh, papists have infiltrated the seminaries and these hirelings have been taught. Uh, they're higher textual criticism, and they view the Bible as just a man-made book, but they'll con you into thinking that they actually believe it's God's word when they don't, all right? And you can, and, and again, uh, oh, Denlingers are not, okay, go to your pastor, local pastor in your local area, and ask him if the word of God that he preaches out of is perfect and divinely inspired. Be prepared for a shock because they don't believe it. That's going to be it. Please study the issue more.